a very crowded opening last night at our job and to now is to join us with our forum uh, it's a collaboration between uh, Indonesian Visual Archive or IBA uh, with our job and we initiate this event basically it's a uh, it's to look back about what kind of strategies or what kind of uh, approaches that uh, the present day artist communities and art practitioners do, especially how they deal with the situation, whether in the social situation or uh, with the uprising uh, art scene, global art scene, original art scene today, uh, that it can be shared, that can be shared to everyone and also their the challenges and potentials and also probably what, what uh, how do uh, the situation itself impact the, the projects or uh, the, the methods of, of, of the artist's work. Uh, we here uh, at the first session we have uh, four or no, five. <laughs> five uh, representatives of collectives or artist initiatives uh, <laughs> who have come here and uh, we chose them because they represent like the, like them, first is because they are, the, uh, we regard them as the most prolific especially and very active in, the, in their own scene and they also represent why we uh, the, the the title of this of this uh, forum we call it empowered uh, it's about the sense of community empowerment and also the artist involvement and in the in empowering their their community whether it's within the art the artistic community or or the or the individual society and also because of their uh, achievements in uh, in the arts in itself uh, we have uh, three from Jogja and two from Vietnam and Malaysia. Uh, Mas Enin here is your moderator and he will introduce them to you. Uh, and all the presentations will be also uh, responded by, we have here our special speaker, Mbak Mela Yarsma from Chimati Art House. So uh, we hope this event will be a good time to share uh, and we also hope from your inputs and opinions as well so that it can be fruitful for everyone here. Thank you. So I give this to Mas Enin to start. I think we start with Malcolm with Crack first. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning and thank you for coming for this uh, session. I think Malcolm is going to present. Moki, Rudy is not joining. Rudy had a rough night <laughs> with a certain degree of alcoholic beverage, probably. <coughs> so, Craig is newly established, I think the newest one compared to the other participants. Uh, Craig established in 2013, so last year. Uh, a printmaking studio and gallery. Uh, it's uh, a collaborative project uh, between Malcolm Smith, uh, Moki next to him, and then Rudy, who is not here yet. Uh, there They've been initiate. They've been initiating couple couple projects, yeah, and events over over the course of this uh, couple of months. Or when is your birthday? It's that March. Okay, so it's already one year, more than one year. So without further ado, I would like to invite Malcolm to to explain to to tell stories about uh, uh, cracks, and I think joined by Moki as well. Please. Thank you, Mas. Uh, good morning. Craig is an alternative space with uh, three members. 
Me, Malcolm, and Rudy Lampong Hermawan. And uh, we start uh, in 2013 in, in May. The initial idea was only share studio but share screen between me and Malcolm. Then studio music as you, as you can see. And and the uh, In this building, there is two floors, <coughs> and we decided to make a gallery, also a studio. This is the first, I mean the downstairs for the gallery, and this is the upstairs for studio. This is our studio. So yeah, we not sure about if we are an alternative space, an artist run space, a business space, a commercial space, gallery, NGO, to or something else. Maybe we are a bit also. And so far we spent in the project that happened in Tokrek. In, uh, we have three kind of project. Maybe Malcolm, you can correct me if I'm wrong. The first one is project from Crack, and the second one is project with Crack, crack with artists, and the third is project from artists. So this one, that's Rudy. So this one is our project, Pameran Perdana, the first, the first exhibition. And in this exhibition, we in the idea is we want to make a silk screen exhibition. So we invite uh, some artists from Jogja, and they give us the 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 artwork, the design, and we together, Malcolm, me, and Rudy make a design to avia, avia level to make a silk screen this is a head this is the view of our exhibition the first exhibition And uh, <coughs> this is project from artists. Uh, usually, artists send the proposal to us, and then if we think the idea and the concept is fixed with our vision, so we will we will make it. This is in the view of the exhibition. And this is in the, the project from Crack called Crack 3D. Same idea with the, <coughs> the first exhibition. We invite some artists and we produce the artwork. The idea of this project, we want experiment about 3D technique. So you must see the artwork with the 3D glass, ice glass. It's my mirror. Anaka. It's me. And this is uh, 
Rudi Rudi Pampong Exhibition. This is also project from artist. The solo exhibition from Rudi. This is some some of the artwork. This is also project from artist Fatsi, our friend from Bandung. For gallery, we we concern about print artwork. So the gallery will be just. Uh, exhibit about print, print artwork, but our studio just for silk screen. So for the example, this one, this is Etsa, also print. Sometimes we make a workshop. This is uh, the next e exhibition, Solid Crack. Basically, this is a merchandise exhibition. We invite the artist, Selaka Rescue, Hehe, Arjuni Daya, Wadero. This is our merchandise, Rudy, Malcolm and me, Restu. Wok, Blangkon, Indra Blangkon. And this is... <coughs> Our project still happen, still happening. Uh, the idea of this project is we talk about Indonesian dream during 100 years. We collect the image from internet, library, like a kunci, ruru, and S14. And we together make a this is the collaborator. Also Antariksa. Other project what we did is uh, we did the accept the exhibition. I mean another thing that we did accept the exhibition. We also work with the other artists to produce the silk screen. This one is for piano. Tisna, Tisna Sanjaya, Agus Wake, the first one is Chagi, Smela. We use the big screen to produce Smela artwork. We also make a workshop. This is workshop, but yeah, 
This is working on paper. But the most important we use Crack Studio to make our own artwork because also we artists so we make a also we make a our own artwork so that thank you Is that already clear, or do you want me to add a few comments? I guess I, I guess the only thing I would add is to say that we started. We just wanted to share a studio, but we wanted the studio to be sustainable. So, and we looked at sustainable not only in terms of um, not only in terms of working with materials that were safe to work with, because a lot of screen printing materials are quite toxic. So we only work with acrylic materials, and we work with really good quality paper. But we were also interested in sustainability in terms of the studio being able to make enough money to pay the rent and to keep on turning over and to make it worthwhile for us all to be working there. And yeah, I don't know if we've actually achieved that, but we're working towards it. Slowly over time, we're um, getting there. And it's, it's sustainable in the sense that it's a fun place to work and we like going back in there. So I think that's probably the most important thing. The rest is slowly coming. Kind of we're getting there. Thank you, uh, Moki, uh, Malcolm, Rudy. Uh, for those who probably sort of want to add the uh, what kind of art ecosystem that we have here, which why we consider crack is quite important in the sense that they focus on prints and. Let's say, generally speaking, market-wise, most always the case in Indonesia considered by the market as less valuable or not valuable, uh, including print works. So to focus on prints and, and really try to expand the practice of prints by, by, by initiating projects uh, and executing them into many different forms of print practices, uh, such as merchandising to get to do some fundraising kind of projects, uh, is is going. So the issues of sustainability, as Malcolm says, is really, really, is really, really uh, a critical issues for for this kind of project, but. Before we continue to the our second presenter, uh, is there any questions? Because later on, I will invite them to join us here together. If you prefer to do later, then we will continue to the second presenter. But if you were just so that you not forget, if you have some sort of like urgent questions that you would like to raise. Uh, to to the presenter now, please do. Okay. Any anyone with wireless microphone over there? No. We're afford to do in Australia, for example. Um, but given that I have a background as an art manager, I I've spent a lot of time trying to set up systems at Crack so that we can keep track of what we're doing and can keep track of our projects and keep track of our finances and all of those things. And I actually look at other, um, some, some other artist collectors and communities and think it's, I realize now how important it is to do that. And I think a lot of people probably don't do that. They don't have those kind of systems in place to be able to organize what they're doing and kind of evaluate what they're doing. Um, and I guess I'm, yeah, but, and actually it's quite a lot of work setting up, putting all of that 
kind of system in place, being able to track your finances every week and being able to keep track of your online, what you, making sure that you're constantly updating yourself online and um, keeping track of people's comings and goings and all of that kind of stuff. But I think that, I actually think that's really important and I think it's probably more important for small spaces, well it's probably important for big spaces as well, but it's just as important for small spaces because otherwise how can you really be sustainable if you, if you, if you're not on top of that. So in some ways, crack is a business, that like we have to look at it in a business-like way and say, okay, we need to sell some work, but we also need to do projects which are about building our brand and our identity, and we also need to do projects which are kind of creatively interesting and critically engaging as well. So we, you know, we're trying to always find a balance between those things. For me, the other, the other side of coming to Jogger and working at Crack from a background in arts administration is you know, like I've, so many of those things I've done as a job in the past, and now I look at what we're doing here and have to go, yeah, this isn't the same. This is not a publicly funded contemporary art space. This is a group of artists that work together. So I have to often really change my expectations and let other people do things differently to the way I would do them, and I find that actually quite challenging. And I'm sure these two find it really challenging that I'm always saying, yeah, but if we do it this way, it'll be better. <laughs> so like collaborative spaces and um, collectives, to me those words are beautiful words and great intentions, but actually the reality, I, the reality is never that simple. It's never, um, it's never like we all make the, dis the same decision at the same time. But we, I think we um, talk about projects in advance and s slowly some of them gather enthusiasm and gather momentum and others kind of peter out. And the ones that gather momentum is because generally we're all enthusiastic about them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always challenging working in a collaborative relationship. And in some ways we are a business. In some ways I do a lot of administrative work and these guys do other things. And we do kind of split things. Rudy focuses more on the technical side of things. Moki focuses a lot on the promotional side of things. I focus a lot on the administrative side of things but we all kind of change things between us as well and yeah it's, I think it's like any working relationship those things are always difficult but I think that's what's interesting about working and if if you still feel rewarded at the end of the day then I, I kind of figure that then it's working. Um.